What if I told you that Magic the Gathering was going to cut down to five to six releases a year? What if I also told you that those releases were going to be comprised of a single booster box each that cost, at max, $110? And what if I went a bit further and told you that the variants, the number of options for cards that we had, were going to be drastically reduced? Well, unfortunately, I can't tell you all that, as I don't believe that's going to be the case, probably at least in my Magic the Gathering lifetime. But I can say that a lot of these issues seem to boil down to one key complaint that Magic fans like you and I have, and that's the cost of the product that we are spending our hard-earned money on. And it's time to have a genuine conversation. Has Magic the Gathering actually gotten too expensive or are we just taking some of this angst and anxiety that we feel out on this one point the answer might surprise you the conversation about the cost of magic the gathering can be an emotional one we don't like when things that we love become unobtainable to us heck i've had this happen so many times over my, the course of my life as a magic the gathering player that i'll admit it often frustrates me in fact it frustrates frustrates me sometimes to the point that i just get on here and throw up some ranty video so i've spent the last couple days really writing down and thinking about my feelings on magic the gathering and more importantly the cost of magic the gathering as someone who recently went to magic con chicago if you haven't yet check out some of the content i got to make there at the convention and if you like stuff like that and stuff like this make sure you hit that sub button and i had to buy a bunch of cards and rebuild a bunch of decks and really get ready to show up to this event and play Magic with my friends for the entire weekend. And yeah, I had a blast. Playing Magic with my friends for just a whole weekend and doing something that I enjoyed was so much fun. It brought back a lot of the love that I feel for Magic. But since that event, we've gotten information on Fallout that have skyrocketed the collector booster box prices. Heck, I'm a lover of Modern, and we got Modern Horizons 3 information that made me less than happy, and then I saw the price of the product, and I got even more upset, I will admit, that was, that, was a, that was a rough day for me. But it really made me think about Magic the Gathering and the price of this product and issues that I have with it. So I wanted to take today and talk about Magic the Gathering and its price and say, hey, is price, is the cost of the product, the number of dollarinos coming out of my pocket that I'm spending on the boxes, actually the problem, or is it something deeper. And while we have this conversation, I want us to remember like, hey, let's try to keep everything in perspective here. Let's try to remember that it's 2024 and we can't just snap our fingers and make all of this true, even if we would want to. But focusing in on the key problem of price is something that I have battled with for the last year. And in fact, I have a pretty firm stance on this. I want Magic the Gathering to be accessible to people who want to play Magic the Gathering. And this is where I think Magic has a massive price problem. And for all intents and purposes, it's self-inflicted. Wizards of the Coast has created a universe where Magic the Gathering products are becoming increasingly unattainable to a large majority of our community. The Play Booster Box itself is still something I believe in. I think a single universal product for both cracking packs and playing draft is an amazing feature. It's something that we have yearned for as Magic the Gathering fans for some time. I actually don't even mind the idea of a special guest set, a way to, on its surface, get reprints to people like you and I in a booster box that we can just go to the shelf and open. I think that's a very good thing. I think it's really exciting and something that adds a little bit of juice and excitement to a product in that has otherwise lost its way. I've said several times on the channel, standard product without standard existing feels like a commander light product. And the idea that we can try to make the set about standard and try to make that format healthy, give standard players and people who want to explore commander by actually digging through cards, not just like forced fed a commander set, something unique and then adding reprints to our largest community commander, because yes, while I might not be the biggest commander fan in the known universe, I respect its need to exist and how much our community loves it, so I am glad that something like the special guest is there to facilitate engagement and involvement in that community. But the big problem with the play booster was the 
price tag. And no, not necessarily the price tag from our perspective. And hold on, hold the comment rage just for a second. We're going to do this several times this video. But if you look, you can get a Murders at Karlov Manor play booster for extremely cheap on the secondary market. Now, the biggest problem with this price is the price to the local game store, causing this inflated price and then a perceived crash on the secondary market. And yes, this all boils down to the play booster box needs to be cheaper. I think if it settles somewhere around $110 to $120, and I know giving actual numbers here is going to evoke a lot of emotion from a lot of us, but that seems fair. Hey, it's not $19.99 anymore. A magic box probably can't cost a hundred dollars. That's what it was back then. Things have changed. There's a larger company and yes, we have to feed the manic beast that is Hasbro. But $110, $220, you know, something like that is not unachievable in my opinion. And hey, in a world where the play booster comes out around that price, your game store can make a couple bucks and every single box sold. I think that's a really healthy world to live in. So from a price perspective, things like that seem fine. But we do have this other side of Magic the Gathering product, and we see that with things like Fallout and Modern Horizons 3, a couple things I went over in the introduction, and this is where things get hairy. Fallout seems to stand in a unique light, where Fallout has a commander deck set, a four set or four deck set of commander decks that you can buy off the shelf, play by yourself or in a pod, where I think they shine the most, and you can do that for relatively affordably. You can find these deck sets anywhere at your local game store or mine, and you can find them on the internet, on the secondary market, on TCG Player, and on Amazon for not that bad of a price when you consider everything you can get out of opening that box. As far as I'm concerned, that product is a great product for the price. And going back to the last time we saw that with Doctor Who, I think this is a wonderful win for Magic fans, Commander fans, Doctor Who fans, Fallout fans, whatever it might be. The rough part, the hard conversation to have is when you get to the collector product, not only in the Commander releases, Fallout Commander, but when you get to things like Modern Horizons 3. And this is where my perception, my idea of what Magic the Gathering products cost and should cost takes a turn. I'm actually okay with a highly limited and highly expensive collector product. I know, I know, but let me explain for a second. Let me pitch you this scenario. You have a four deck set of commander decks. Every single card from the set in a normal version is available in those decks, and you can buy those decks for a reasonable amount of money, much seemingly much cheaper than a single collector booster box. Well, this is a win. If you want to play Magic the Gathering, get out and slam cardboard on the table, more power to you, and not only can you, but you can do so in a variety of different ways as we're often getting brand new Magic the Gathering releases. In fact, I think we're getting them probably too frequently. But on the other side, to satisfy the back half of the Magic the Gathering community, yes, people who like to collect Magic the Gathering, people who like special unique items and to bling out decks and who don't just care about the play experience, but also care about the collecting, the value of their collection, completing sets, things like that. I think it's totally fine to have chase versions of these products that those people can hunt down, add to their collections, and take a bite out of the Magic the Gathering pie from that side, if you will. And that to me is okay. I, I'm fine with Fallout, or eh, Fallout's a bad example, and I'll tell you why in a second, but I'm fine with the expensive collector box. But this gets hairy when you enter a situation like Fallout. Looking back at Doctor Who, Doctor Who had playable cards, and you get every card in the box for an affordable amount, but then every card that was in the collector box you could also just get in the commander deck so there was no reason to like have to go buy the expensive product you didn't have to do that you could experience the magic set at an affordable point remember that the experiencing a set at an affordable entry point that's a big theme in this video but then if you wanted to go further and sink your teeth into a bit of that collecting and value side you could buy the collector booster box fallout kind of transitions away from this a little bit as there's a set of like 27 some odd sub cards that you can only get in the collector booster box. Now 27 is a bit disingenuous. There's some of those cards that are actual Magic the Other reprints that you just go to your local game store and buy a copy of for much cheaper. But well, they're all reprints, but some of them are affordable modern reprints. Some of them are really expensive cards 
where we are now just reprinting a second expensive special version. You get what I'm saying? The point is, not every game piece in that release is accessible to the people who want to play the game. And remember, I just said game pieces. I know some of you are going to get upset, but I am okay with expensive things as long as everything you want to play the game is obtainable. But that's where you get to something like Modern Horizons 3. And the Modern Horizons 3 play boost, or the conversation, the product that started this whole conversation, where it was, hey, you're a Magic fan, you wanna go out, you wanna crack packs, you wanna play the set, play draft, you wanna build a standard deck, add some of these cards to your existing commander decks, whatever it might be, well, the Modern Horizons 3 Play Booster is about the cost of a Modern Horizons 2 Draft and Set Booster combined. Yeah, I I didn't realize that when they were going to be like, oh, we're going to take the Draft and the Set Booster and combine them into one. They're just going to stack the prices on top of each other and add them up. Like, that's ridiculous. And this is where a set like Modern Horizons 3, like even Commander Masters, looking back at 2023, lack an affordable entry point, where a Magic fan like you or me has to have an unreasonable amount of money in their pocket just to go experience the release. And this is the problem. This is the crux of the issue with Magic the Gathering price. When a product, a release, something that is delivered to us, that has unique things, that has an opportunity for us to gather and have that experience with our friends and our community, has no affordable entry point, the product, in my opinion, is a failure, and that failure is due directly to price. We have examples from 2023 of this where we have, you know, failures. Commander Masters is an ex uh, a massive example of a failure, but the antithesis of that, of, some, of a product that, yes, is a bit more expensive, but have multiple points of entry where you could get in and play the game of Magic in that set is Lord of the Rings, and we saw the product be wildly successful across multiple tiers and multiple product levels for that reason. I was like, oh, Lord of the Rings pumped because of the one of one ring. Well, that's not why so many draft booster boxes sold. That's why that's not why it sold more set booster boxes than every other set in 2023 on TCG Player. Yeah, that's what we do here at Cardboard Finance. We track all of that information and the channel members support. So if you want to help support that mission and that website at cardboardfinance.com, join the channel membership. The, the link is down below. It's five bucks a month. It's not that bad. And hey, it helps keep us going around here. But that is a wonderful example of accessibility with some chase, with everything in between, and something for us to sink our teeth into. This is what's missing a lot, and in Modern Horizons 3, I feel like this is drastically lacking. So when you take a step back and you look at Magic the Gathering as a whole, it does have a price problem, but not with every single set. I know, not every set is for you, blah, 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 but it pains me when a set comes out and there's no affordable point of entry for someone to get in on the game and play Magic. And yeah, I'm kind of discounting a bit Modern Horizons 3 Commander here because I'm still salty. Modern Horizons should be a modern set. It should have modern decks and modern playable cards. And what are we doing with Modern Horizons 3 Commander? Why is there a Commander subset? Okay, I'm glad. I got that out of my system. Sometimes it just helps to say it out loud and work through it a bit, but this is my problem with Magic the Gathering price. You have to have an entry point for your average fan, for someone like me that wants to go and just play the game for fun on a Friday night when I get a chance to be out and about with the community. I think this is our biggest issue. It's not that Magic the Gathering has $500 boxes. Heck, we can, you can have your $1,000 boxes. As long as everything that's in that $1,000 box is accessible from a game piece perspective to the rest of the player base, I am totally fine with that. And while we're at it, I am fine with cards that come out of those regular boxes, AKA something like Shieldred, something like the Shocklands, holding a good amount of value and having special versions of those to chase for people who want those in-depth collections and those value piles in their binders. I think we have to attack the Magic the Gathering situation and problem from all corners and, you know, take a bite out of every side of the pie and consider how everyone else enjoys our game when we talk about this. But the lack of accessibility in some of these sets is not only disturbing, but 
in my opinion, a massive failure on the part of Wizards of the Coast. But hey, that's just my opinion. I know, this is kind of a rational thought video for me. These don't often do very well on YouTube, but it makes me feel better to put this out there because while I have a problem with Magic the Gathering price, I'm okay with chase and collectible things. I think we need to lower the barrier of entry and accessibility. I've said that like 19 times, but I really believe in that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you hate the idea that there is a thousand dollar box and some things are collectible, even though you could get a regular version of that card for much cheaper? Or does none of the value of Magic the Gathering products matter to you? You want everything to be free just so you can have any game piece you want and don't really care if things hold value. In fact, the more I look at my comment section, the more I think that might be the community consensus. Let me know in the comment section below. If you've never shared a hometown TCG video. This would be a cool one to share because we're just out having a, you know, a very realistic conversation. I appreciate all of you hanging out there again. One more time, consider joining the channel membership for five bucks a month to support cardboardfinance.com and help me pay some of those server bills and also just get access to custom emotes, some content early, things of that nature. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh and we will see you around. All right, goodbye.